Hi there. Hello again, mister. What brings you by? Listen, Tanya, I know who you are. We've already covered this, haven't we? No, I mean who you really are. You're Heather Goffstein. Or at least you were. I told you, I don't know any Heather. Tanya. I don't know any Heather because Heather is gone. Heather is dead. She doesn't exist anymore. She can't. I'm sorry, Tanya, but she does. What do you want? Money? A promotion? Like Jim? No, I just want you to come with me. There's someone you need to meet. I don't have a choice, do I? Fine, lead on. But remember this. Peter didn't just teach me how to do Pilates. Take me anywhere funny, and you'll be looking at a broken nose. I wouldn't dream of it. Why are we going out there? Just trust me. Trust you? That's rich. You, who are you? Are you in league with this man? Um, kind of? Two blackmailers instead of one. This is just great. Where the hell are you taking me? Just follow us, okay? Can I at least call my car service? I don't think that's possible. What do you mean? She means that they'd never come in this weather. It's better to walk. Come on. Where are we going? It's just up this way. Wait. I know this building. I used to live here. Back when I was... Why did you bring me here? Whatever you brought me here for, get on with it. Tanya, there's someone you need to meet. There's nobody here I want to see, I assure you. Even still, I just need you to follow me. Then we can forget about this whole thing. <sighs> Fine. Hey, Heather? Hey, who's your friend? What is this? Who are you? Answer me! Heather Goffstein? Who are you? No. No, 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 no. This is insane. I'm going insane. Um, sorry? You shouldn't be here. You shouldn't exist. What's your problem? My problem? My problem is that I hate you. Hate me? You don't even know me. I destroyed you. I got rid of your name. I got rid of your hair. I would have gotten rid of your face if I could have afforded it. You can't get rid of me that easily. No kidding! For 20 years, I was free of you, and now you come breezing back. Breezing back? From where? First Jim wanted a promotion, and now this idiot here wants... I don't know what! I don't want anything. That's bull! Huh? You be quiet. Hey! Stop, Stop that! Look at each other. You're the same person, give or take 20 years. I don't understand. I don't think I want to. Tanya, what happened when you got Jim's note? What, what note? It's too late to deny it. Nothing happened. I just wanted to forget. Forget what? Forget you. Forget this whole life I left behind. Why? Why are you so ashamed of me? All this, this life... It's a part of who you were, who you become. Will I ever be free of you? Do you really want to be? I'm not a bad person. I'm just kind of lost. I know I'll find my way eventually. Isn't that the important thing? Well, isn't it? Look at you. I really was beautiful once. You're really beautiful now. Damn straight. Wow. You okay? Okay. I haven't felt this good in years. It's like an espresso and a colonic all at once. Speaking of which, you can take your blackmail threat and shut it. And I'm gonna tell Jim the same thing. Maybe it'll end my career, or maybe it'll give me a book deal. Either way, I'm tired of hiding. Tanya, listen. No, I'm not Tanya anymore. 
Tanya die. She... She what? She... I... We... Took three Valium with a vodka chaser. That's all I remember. You're not really a blackmailer, are you? No, I'm not. I'm... I'm dead? I'm sorry. I... Ugh. If I'm dead, why do I feel sick to my stomach? Listen, there's no time to explain. Just grab a hold of this. What? Just do it. That was... interesting. Did it work? Only one way to find out. Hey, look who's here. Heather, safe and sound. Safe. You were always an optimist, Michael. Sorry, I know this is not exactly the reunion we expected after all this time. But you have no idea. I thought you were... Well, I explained that already. So, Madeline, you got your spook. What have you learned? It is interesting. This spirit is experiencing what would be considered nausea in a living person. This spirit? I do have a name. Apologies. She is being pulled. There is the signature of another spirit at work. A signature? Yes. I can see it. It is faint, but I can see it. Only the power of this circle is stopping it from gaining a foothold. Unfortunately, it is too faint for me to see anything useful. And we dare not lower the circle. I need to examine another soul. One that is marked like this one. And by another soul, you mean Peter, don't you? Peter? Peter Fielding? Yes. His soul is still out there. I see. Hey, Peter? Hey man, what can I do for you? So I'm told that you give personal training sessions. Yeah, are you interested? I sure am. Well, I don't have the time right now, but I can probably pencil you in. Just gotta check the schedule outside. Hmm, how about next Tuesday, say 11 a.m.? Sure, I think I can swing that. Great. Here's my number in case you need to reschedule. You got a phone? Ah, no. Well, I'll just remember it. Hmm? Okay. 646-555-0425. Thanks. Great. See you then. And by the way, when you come to our session, don't wear a suit. Officer Palmer? Yeah, yeah. What can I do for you? Could you look up another phone number for me? I suppose I can, within reason. I'm trying to track down someone who Leah knew. The number is 646-555-0425. Alright, give me a second. That phone is registered to a unit in Murray Hill. Here's the address. Well, I'd better go. Thanks for the help. Sure. The front door. It's locked. Typical. Ugh. Coming. Yeah. Could I ask you a few questions? Um, no. Who are you? I'm a friend of Peter's. So? So, I was hoping we could talk about him. 
funny. I was hoping to be left alone tonight. Guess who wins? <sighs> Why is nobody ever happy to see me? Dunno. It can't be your copious amount of social grace. I can't smell them, but even I can tell those flowers are fake. It's a painting of a young woman. No idea who she is. A painting of a country home. Some kind of farm, maybe? Looks quaint, in any case. After seeing the state of this joint, Red's place doesn't seem so bad. I'm not just gonna blow on everything I see. I'm not just gonna blow on everything I see. Yuck, who knows how long that's been lying around. I can't touch him, but maybe I should get a closer look at him. I'm not just gonna blow on everything I see. I'm not just gonna blow on everything I see. She looks like she stopped caring about anything years ago. Bingo. The case number is listed in this file. It belongs to a Maggie Fielding. It appears she was picked up in the raid on the Karth house. She was brought in for an emergency detox and forced to go into rehab. It lists one known family member, a brother, Peter Fielding. Ugh. Oh, coming. You again? What is it this time? I'm looking into Peter Fielding's death. Did you know him? Look, I'm done talking about Peter. I've got my own problems. Just leave me alone. Charming woman. Like a hedgehog, but without the winning personality. Oh, uh, coming. You again? What is it this time? You're Peter's sister. Maggie, right? Sure. Fine. You got me. Why couldn't you just tell me that before? Because I'm trying to get healthy, working through the program, admitting I have a problem. Just like my sponsor says. All that is the first step. I'm still working on the rest. Talking about Peter? That's step five. I'm not ready. It's nothing personal. I just need to avoid thinking about him for a while. And you're doing that by living in his apartment. It's just temporary. I have nowhere else to go. And besides, what difference does it make? He's gone. He had a stupid accident, and now he's gone. That's just it, Maggie. It might not have been an accident. No. Whatever you're thinking, no. I need this to be over, you understand? Then we need to talk. You can call your sponsor if you want to. <sighs> Screw my sponsor. Let's do this. So, talk. 
What do you know about Peter's death? Just what I was told. That he was fixing a light bulb and fell off the ladder. I remember thinking it was a pretty stupid way to go, especially for him. How do you mean? Did you know the guy? He was obsessed with health. To die just falling off a ladder? I always thought he'd outlive the world. Why is Peter such a sore subject with you? That's between me and him. Or his ghost. Or whatever. It might help to talk about it. I'm still working through the program. Talking about it is step number five. I'm not ready for it yet. Could you tell me about your father? He opened the gym, right? Sure. Could you tell me anything else about him? If you want to know about him, you'll have to ask him yourself. Here's his address. He's always home. So, what are you watching? I don't know. Some animated thing? Not normally into cartoons, but the ratings say it's good. Is it? I guess. They changed the main character's voice after the first episode, but it's not bad. Keeps my mind off, well, the stuff you keep bringing up. Um, could you excuse me for just a sec? My shoe is untied. Sure, I guess. Thanks. Smooth. Tell me about yourself. Uh-uh. Opening up is step number five. I am nowhere near ready yet. How long was Peter working at the gym? Uh, about 20 years. Never thought he'd do it. Why? Don't know. He seemed to drift around for a long time. He was a teacher, waiter, construction worker, you name it. Then one day, he decides that taking over Dad's gym is what he has to do. Now the gym is a neighborhood staple. Made it more popular than Dad ever did. Good for him, I guess. Have you ever heard the name Benjiro? Benjiro? No. Sounds Japanese or something. Do you know a Father Michael Cooper? Look, I don't need a priest. I don't need to be saved. I just need to get healthy. I'm not asking you to see him. I'm asking if you know him. Oh. No, I don't know him. Have you ever heard of the Grace Group? What, those circle jerk meetings my brother went to? You know about it. Yeah, I know about it. Peter was a mess before he joined that group. If you ask him, he would say it helped him find himself. Did it? Who knows? I thought it was a cult. Might have been better if it was. Why is that? Look, never mind. Peter found himself. Good for him. I just have to focus on myself. Can't you tell me anything about your father? I told you. Ask him yourself. Well, I'd better get going. Sure. You know the way. Wait, this is Greenwood Cemetery. It's a little structure overlooking the lake. This tombstone is faded and hard to read. There are a lot of family crypts in this cemetery, some going back a hundred years. That card unlocks the field's gym door, nothing else. There we go. Nobody can say I don't do anything nice. Her name is Tanya Corsi. She's the ghost we saw in George's roof. I don't need to use the locker room. I'm not here to work out. I put it back on the wall. I don't need to take it with me.
It's a calendar with personal training bookings marked on it. It's just a number on the calendar. It's just a number on the calendar. The month is written at the top in dry erase marker. I talk with the dead, not their graves. Hey, Peter? Hey man, what can I do for you? Say, can we reschedule that training session we set up? Sure, we can do that. Let's go check the calendar outside. Hey, miss, you're dripping water on the floor. Oh, um, sorry. No problem, just be sure to put on sneakers or something. Want to work out. Anyway, let's check the schedule. Huh? Is that the date? Hey, listen, I'm sorry, but there's an appointment I've got to keep. Can we sort this out another day? Sure, no problem. Thanks. Officer Palmer? Yeah, yeah. What can I do for you? Is there anything in the system about a Connor Fielding? He died about 20 years ago. Let's see. Our records from back then are a bit spotty, but can't hurt to check. No? Nothing comes up, but it's a very common name. Is there anything specific you can tell me about him? He was in the Army. Oh. Then there might be something in the Veterans Association records. Aren't those public? Not everything. But fortunately for you, I can access everything. Okay. Archived records. Connor Fielding. Ah, oh, seriously? What's wrong? Idiots. They had no idea how to archive data back then. I can only look them up by service number. You don't know it, do you? I do, actually. It's 070-234-541. Well, that's handy. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Connor Fielding. Served in Vietnam from 1966 till 1969. Honorably discharged, moved with his family to New York a few years later. Huh, that's interesting. What? It says here that the police were called to his apartment several times. Reports of raised voices. Possible domestic abuse. No charges were pressed, which is why it wasn't in our police records. But it's in the military database? Word gets around. Someone must have noted it in his VA file. Doesn't say much else. Do you have any information on a Maggie Fielding? Let me check. Maggie Fielding. Yeah, she was picked up in a raid not too long ago. A raid? A drug den in Chelsea. Some dump called the Carth House. I know it. Huh. Of course you do. Anything else? Just that she and about a dozen others were sent to the hospital for a detox. They were processed and let go. That's it? That's it. Well, I'd better go. 
Thanks for the help. Sure. Uh, coming. Oh, sure, come on in. Can't you tell me anything about your father? I told you. There are things I don't talk about. So your father is dead? Yep. Why didn't you just say that instead of sending me to the cemetery? The only person to visit Dad was Peter. And he can't do that anymore. I figured Dad could use the company. Really? No, not really. I told you. There are things I can't talk about yet. You said Peter visited the cemetery? Once a year. On the anniversary of Dad's death. Peter was a damn saint. I learned a bit about your father. You did? The police were called several times to his house. No charges were made. It's not hard to read between the lines. Huh. Well, I suppose you know everything now. I don't, but I'm trying to. Why? Why do you care so much? What does my father beating the crap out of my mother have to do with how Peter died? There's something bigger going on. That doesn't matter. I can't take on anybody else's problems. I'm barely dealing with my own. I've been trying to forget this crap my whole life, and now I have a chance. I'm not going back to that. I'm sorry. I know you think you have good reasons, but I really need to be alone right now. Listen. Please. Leave. Okay. You have such a way with people. Are you still here? Just leaving. Where are you going? To visit my precious father. Not that it's any of your business. My neighbors are kind of twitchy. You'd better get out of here before someone calls the cops. Maggie. Huh? Huh. I had a feeling you'd follow me here. I didn't follow you. You got here after I did. You're not gonna leave me alone, are you? You know I try and help you whenever I can. Not until I spill everything. I've never pressured you to talk to me, Maggie. Although God knows maybe I should've. I'm sorry, but it's important. Maybe it's because I'm out of that stuffy apartment. Maybe it's because when I'm here, I know he's really gone. I know. I miss him too. Talking about it. The fifth step. My sponsor said I didn't have to do them in order. Many people don't. I guess now is as good a time as any. I'd like that, Maggie. I really would. So, talk. Tell me about your father. It's not about him. Not really. It's all wrapped up with Peter. It's always Peter. What are you talking about? What did Peter do? Nothing. Everything. Maggie, what are you talking about? <sighs> he took over my dad's gym, made it successful. I hated him for it. Wait, what? Don't you remember how miserable I was? Drifting from job to job, hating all of them. Running dad's gym was something I was good at. I thought you'd be happy for me. Didn't Peter have lots of jobs he hated before he started working at the gym? Couldn't you be happy for him? Happy? Happy that he took my father's name and made it revered? I don't see the problem here. The people in the neighborhood love that gym. They come by and say what a nice old man Connor Fielding was. And what a shame he died. And how nice that his son took up his legacy. Legacy. A legacy of bruises and hiding in the dark. Bruises? What are you talking about? You always believed her when she said she was clumsy. It was like some horrible after-school special. Maggie, you were not saying what I think you're saying. You never knew, did you, Peter? So wrapped up in yourself. You never saw what he was doing. Why didn't you ever tell me? Mom hid it from both of us. And I was too scared to say anything. In the end, it was just easier to say nothing. I'd hate you. And now it's too late. For what it's worth, I don't hate you anymore, Peter. But I need to get on with my life. 
Goodbye, brother. Goodbye? What do you mean, goodbye? Um, sorry. I should go. Maggie! Wait! Maggie! I never knew! I swear! I never knew! I just don't understand. I... I'm sorry, Peter. I remember. The ladder. It broke. Oh, man. I don't feel so good. Right. We don't have a lot of time. Peter, I need you to grab a hold of this. What the heck is that thing? No time. Just grab. Well, that was close. Did it work? Let's get back and find out. This whole story is incredible. It's all true, Peter. Can't you feel it? Like something is trying to pull you away. I thought it was just indigestion, but I've never had indigestion in my life. Figures I'd get it when I'm dead. Madeline, have you had time to examine them? I think... yes. Madeline? Yes, apologies. I believe I have all the information I need. Huh? Madeline? Ugh, I really don't feel so good. This can't be right. Michael, what's going on? Madeline! Apologies, my host. I... Madeline, what just happened? That felt quite pleasant. Madeline? Madeline? Hey! You, Malone, stay back. You as well, Black. I have absorbed enough energy to burn that precious body of yours to a cinder. Why? Why do this? Have you ever heard of the concept, the journey of the soul? What? It is said that every soul has a predestined fate or destiny, and the goal of every soul is to find it. But it is also said that the joy comes from the journey, not the destination. Have you ever wondered where you would be now without the grace card? without the epiphanies that were pushed into your brains as if by magic. Maybe you would have all found your way. Maybe not. But you skipped the journey. Went right to the destination. It made your souls happy for certain. But it also made them weak. Pliable. Controllable. By someone like me. And now, if you'll excuse me, I am still very hungry. No! Ow! <laughs> You. This whole time it was you? Indirectly. I knew these souls existed, I just needed to collect them. I could not collect my host until last, because my existence here was tied to him. As for Fielding and Goffstein, they were sleeping spirits. They needed to be awakened. Something only you could do. So, thank you for that. What the hell are you doing this for? I pulled you out of the dark! You were free! Why mess that up? Free. You, of all souls, tell me that I'm free. I am dead. For centuries, I have been dead. I was a good spirit guide. I did my duty. And yet, did I ever move on? Did I receive any reward? No. I was passed on from host to host, saving spirit after spirit. It became tiresome. Then my last host banished me. I remained there, in the void, alone, forgotten by the universe, until you brought me out. Yeah, well, we all make mistakes. But I was still not free. To fully free myself, I needed power, energy. These souls, these poor, misguided souls, were the nearest source I could find. Collect? What do you mean by that? Perhaps that word is not sufficient. Possibly... consume, ingest, absorb. I took their energy as part of my own. And what do you need energy for? What on earth could be worth all this? Allow me to demonstrate. Hey! What the hell are you doing? Ah! Red. 
You okay? Come on, darling, say something. Interesting. I wondered if I would have to relearn how to breathe or walk, but it all comes quite naturally. Like putting on a tailored glove. Madeline. Hello, Malone. Seeing you with these eyes is... different. Of course, it might be these spectacles. Cumbersome things. I'll show you cumbersome. How about a punch in the face? Malone, there is no need for this hostility. No need? You lied to us from day one! I apologize for the ruse. I admit I have not been completely forthcoming. No kidding. Come now, Malone. Nothing has changed. I won't shirk the duty. I have no choice. We will continue to save lost souls. Performing it from this end could be... refreshing. I work with Red, not with you. You can think of me as her, if it will help. Like hell. Sadly, you have no choice. I'm gonna fix this. I'm afraid it's too late for that. Red, fight her. Whatever she's doing, fight her. She cannot. If her predecessors could not win against me, then she has no hope. Not with the power I now possess. Predecessors? What are you talking about? This is not the first time I have attempted this. In the Void, I could only reach certain minds. The minds of other bestowers. Other bestowers? You mean... The other Blackwell women, yes. But I was too weak, and so were they. I could only control their minds for a few minutes before they... broke. Broke? I did not expect that would happen, but some good did come of it. I eventually learned the proper approach, and finally I have succeeded. You're insane. I mean it, Madeline, a stark, raving lunatic. Do you have any idea what you've done? You dare condemn me, little ghost? Allow a few centuries to pass. Wait until you've been left abandoned in the dark, adrift, terrified. Then you can pass judgment. But until then, I must get to the business of living. Stay here. We're not done talking. I said stay here! Ah! Hey! Now cut that out! Do try and keep up. What? What are you doing? You know, Red and I have a bond. We gotta stick together. Where she goes, I go. You might be wearing Red's body, but you ain't her. There's a line in the snow, and you can't cross it. But Rosa Blackwell, she can cross it just fine. You're... you're hurting me! Good. <gasps> you idiot! Do you have any idea what you just did? I just evicted you, sister. No. No, I will not be trapped in that limbo again. Tough. You made this mess, now clean it up. Very well. Just remember, you brought this on yourself. Er... Uh, Red? Red, talk to me. Joey? I... You okay? I... Uh, Careful. I feel... You! Great, like a bad penny. Dispatch reported a woman ranting to herself in front of a church. I had a feeling it would be you. Care to explain the dead body around the corner? Corey? That's Officer Palmer. Now, explain. No. Miss Blackwell, I've been patient and cooperative so far. No. Stay where you are! What are you doing? Was it like this for them? For who? Red? I think... I think it's happening. Huh? Auntie, my grandmother, it's happening. It's like... it's like it's... No, it's too much! Red, stop that. Come on, you're gonna hurt yourself. Jesus, cut it out! Not again, not you, not now. 
Help somebody. Anybody. I did warn you. Gotta... No! No! Huh? Joey? Joey? I... God, I'm tired. Hello? Auntie? Is that you? Oh, hey. I saved you a seat. Where are we? You ask too many questions. You always did. Sit down, kiddo. We've got nothing but time. Cigarette? No thanks. Hmm. Auntie? Yeah, kiddo? What happened to me? To us? Don't know. Last I remember, my head hurt really bad. I tried to make it stop, but it just got worse. I might have thrown something? You did. I was there. Did I scream? Yes. I I didn't hurt you, did I? I hid in the closet. Huh. Good. Smart. Yeah. We were possessed by the spirit called Madeline. She didn't succeed, but we ended up here. Somehow. Oh. That's all you can say? Oh? Does it really matter anymore? I guess not. You look so... young. Well, I take care of myself. No, that's not what I mean. When I last saw you, you were over 50, at least. So I kept on living, huh? You were alive, if that's what you mean. Hmm. Hospital bed. Like Mom. Yeah. Well, I guess it was my turn. And now, I guess it's yours. I've missed you. Oh yeah? Yeah. Thanks. Why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? About Joey. About my family. All of it. You were five years old. You could barely understand how to tie your shoes. And I thought we had more time. But hey... You're here now, and we've got all the time in the world. Is this where you've been all this time? Don't know. Don't much care. The view is nice, and I don't have Joey nagging me. Auntie, you don't seem yourself. <laughs> you don't know me at all, kiddo. In this place, I feel more like myself than anywhere I've ever been. Auntie, is my grandmother here? She was but she faded away. I guess it will happen to me soon, and you. But in the meantime, let's enjoy the view. Huh, sure is a nice view, isn't it? Yeah, let's just enjoy it for a while. <sighs> it's like they're reading from a playbook, constrained, drugged, Placed under observation. In a week, they'll move you to another ward. Then they'll poke you full of needles and nod thoughtfully while taking notes. Then they'll move you to a long term care floor, keep you drugged, fed, washed. And then I'll watch you turn gray. I'll watch your skin weather and dry. And then I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. It's all my fault. I can't blame the universe, or death, or even you. This one's on me. Maybe I deserve it, but you certainly don't. There's gotta be a way to fix this. There has to be. The padded room might be overkill, but if the drugs ever wear off... Better safe than sorry, I guess. It's the door to the cell. Closed and locked, naturally. This place hasn't changed all that much since the last time I was here. Home sweet home.
more technical crap that I don't know how to use. I don't know what that is, but it can't be good. Guy manning the front desk. He wasn't around the last time I was stuck in this place. One of the few things that's changed around here. Looks like a duty roster for the orderlies. No point in reading it. I'll become very familiar with the staff here after a few years. Oh, this guy. Dr. Donald Quentin, or as I like to call him, Dr. Quack. Age 34. That thing needs a date with Height. a needle and thread, Five feet, or a four fireplace. Inches. Weight, 118 pounds. Subject assaulted a police officer, then herself. Some kind of abstract thing, no idea what it could be. When restrained by a team of officers, she reacted so violently that two of them were hospitalized. That guy was Lauren Blackwell's doctor when she was here. Did nothing but plug her full of drugs. I guess it's Red's turn now. Deemed a danger to herself and others, she was sedated and brought to this facility. Just an old closet. Huh. This letter is dated several years ago. It's just a file cabinet, probably been here years. Looks like an old ventilation system. Empty, for now anyway. Eh? Hello? Hey. Yes. Hey, are you okay, pal? I... should be okay. You should be okay, but you're not? I'm not like them. It should have worked. So, who are you? Everyone. No one. So many thoughts. So many. Huh, I can see why I ended up here. Look, we're gonna be neighbors for a while, so maybe you could tone down the crazy? No, I'm not that. Just the opposite. The folks who run this place might disagree. It's so hard to think. What exactly should have worked? Everything. Nothing. Maybe. Regret. Maybe. You regret something? You know nothing of regret. I might know a thing or two. Hey, I did some research. Kinda. You're Benjiro, aren't you? Ben... Jiro? Yeah. Benjiro Hattori? You were the last guy to occupy this room, so I'm guessing you're him. What do you know of me? You ran those Grace Group meetings. I... yes. That was so long ago. How long has it been? Twenty-five years. Twenty-five years? Have I really spent two decades of my life in this place? More than that, Benjiro. More than that? You died here. You're haunting the padded room where they locked you up. Yes, I thought as much. You thought as much? You're saying you know you're dead? I suspected, but I couldn't be sure. How could you not know for sure? Well, I've never died before, did I? My people spend so much time avoiding death. 
that we refuse to believe it when it happens. Your people? Yes, I'm part of a society. Some would call us vampires, but not the kind from stories. We extend our own lives by consuming the positive energy from willing subjects. They die, but we live. We ran into one of your people last year. Guy named Gavin. He killed a bunch of people. He tried to kill us. He's dead now. I see. You must understand, I am not like my colleagues. I never liked hurting people, but I didn't want to die either. So I made a point of studying the life energy we consumed. I created the Epiphany Experiment. The Epiphany Experiment? I wanted to improve the lives of those I fed upon, not destroy them. Instead of removing positive energy from a subject, I increased it. I enabled them to achieve their heart's hidden desire, to create a surplus of positive energy, and I skimmed off the top. Let me guess, it failed. Yes and no. It worked too well. My mind couldn't take the energy. I went a bit mad, ended up committed here, and here I am. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Your experiment ended up killing your subjects. Even worse, their souls. Their souls? You made them weak. Weak enough that they got, well, soul-napped by this spook named Madeline. I see. I did not consider that eventuality, but it does explain much. Eh? Come with me. I must show you something. Whatever that thing is, I can't reach it from here. I don't know what that is, but it can't be good. That vortex. I witnessed its formation. I did not believe what I was seeing. Why? What is it? Energy is siphoning through the void at an alarming rate. Something is calling it, drawing it like a beacon. Something with enormous power. Something, huh? And what is this something? I cannot say, but don't you recognize the location? That vortex is over Grace Church. Madeline. Yes, if she has harnessed as much energy as you say, that is the only answer. But why would she do such a thing? What she is doing will destroy her soul, rip it into shreds. She said she wanted to stop existing. I guess this was her backup plan. Good riddance. You don't understand. This energy, it won't stop at just her. It will expand until it dissipates. It could destroy every soul, living or dead, within a 10 mile radius. Of course it will. Damn it, this is my fault. Again, I set her loose. It's not enough, is it? It's not enough to destroy three generations of women. It's not enough to destroy half a dozen spooks. No. You gotta fry your own soul into oblivion, and take the whole damn city with you. <sighs> so, what do we do? Where the hell are you going? I am leaving. I must get myself out of range. What are you gonna do, haunt Jersey? If I must. What about the rest of us? I'm sorry. I'm sorry? That's it? That is all I can offer. I fear that everything I've done only makes matters worse. Hey, get back here! Damn it! Red? It's me. Are you even in there? Are you somewhere else? You're still breathing. You're still alive. I figure somehow, maybe, you can hear me. Maybe I'm wrong, but... Talking is all I'm good for these days, so what else can I do? You gotta wake up. Things are bad out there. Really, really bad. So bad that I'm not sure we can stop it. But we gotta try. We're the only ones who can. You understand? We! It's gotta be the both of us. Because... Because let's face it, I'm nothing. Just a gust of wind. I don't know what to do. Just... Get up. Get up, and we'll fix this. 
Somehow, I promise. Please? Please? Did you hear that? Hmm? No. I... Just get up. Are you hearing that? Get up, and we'll fix this. I don't hear anything. I think... Somehow, I promise. I really think... You okay? I'm fine. I'm gonna look around. Sure, kiddo. I'm not going anywhere. Too slick to climb. Auntie? Yeah, kiddo? Auntie, there's this ledge. I can't reach it. I could really use your help getting up there. What's the point? There might be a way out. Something to get us out of here. Why would I want to do that? I think Joey needs our help. <laughs> he doesn't deserve it. Auntie, please. Don't auntie me. Let me smoke in peace. Fight this, auntie, please. I'm done fighting. I'm dying out there. If I stay here too long, I'll die. Is that all? Life and death are just the opposite sides of the same door. Doesn't matter which side you're on, it's all the same. Joey's told me stories about how he saved your life. He saved mine too. Only after putting us in danger in the first place. You can't blame him for that. Just watch me. Joey was so wrong about you. What do you mean? He doesn't say much about his past, but get him talking about you and he won't shut up. You should be more like Lauren, Red. Your aunt wouldn't take that from nobody. He didn't mean to, but for years he made me feel like I couldn't measure up. That I was nothing, insignificant when compared to you. But he really didn't know you, did he? You don't actually care about anything. How could I? Joey's voice in my ear, always pushing me, following me around like a lost puppy. And all those ghosts, night after night after night, I just got numb. Then my brother died. I decided I could do something good for once. Something real. Something tangible. That something was raising you. So don't you dare throw that in my face. I'm sorry, Auntie, but I can't believe that. If you really cared, you'd fight. You'd help me. <sighs> you never were this stubborn as a five-year-old. I grew up. This is it. Can you give me a boost up there? Sure, I guess. Ugh, you've gotten bigger since I last saw you. Hmm. Here. Come on, I'm not leaving you here. <sighs> Fine. Auntie, are you okay? Nothing, it's just... Auntie! What? We need to keep moving. It hurts. Don't you feel it? Yes, but I can't stay here and neither can you. Do you feel it? Yeah. Let's keep moving.
That light, it's so beautiful. After I'd send a ghost off, I'd just sit there and stare, try to make sense out of it, wonder what was on the other side. I suppose now I can. I'm dead out there, aren't I? Back in New York. Yes, I'm sorry. I should have realized I've had this conversation so many times. I remember now how it happened. Someone trying to take over my mind. It cracked my head open, let the universe pour through. It hurt. I know. It happened to me. A part of me escaped, hid out there in the void, anything to get away. You brought me back. You would have done the same. Maybe. I wasn't quite myself. But when I'm honest with myself, I never did know who I was. Auntie, I think... Yeah, I know. It's time. I know how this works. Say hi to Joey for me, huh? And tell him... You know what? Don't tell him anything. It'll drive him crazy. Ow! Holy Jesus! Red? Is that you? Joey? Oh my god, my head. You're back? You're really back? I... think so? Where am I? And what am I wearing? Short version, you're in the loony bin. You wouldn't believe what's going on out there. Madeline is pulling energy through the void. This will create a spiritual explosion that will destroy all souls within range. Uh... yeah? How'd you know that? Um... I think it's the universe pouring into my head. What now? It is how both Lauren and Patricia met their end. Their minds could not take the pressure. Their souls hid in the void until they died. I found my way back. Ow! You're not gonna relapse, are you? No, it's bad, but not as bad as before. I can control it. Kind of. Well, we'll deal with that later. Can you get out of that jacket? Oof. Um, no. Okay, first things first, let's get you out of here. And Red? Yeah? Don't you dare scare me like that again. What the hell was that? Jesus, if that Benjiro guy is right, we gotta find a way to stop that thing. He's unconscious. He's unconscious. What the hell is going on? This whole building is shaking! It is starting. The effects of the void energy are taking root. The entire city has fallen unconscious. We are the only ones awake. We're the only ones? Why? We have both been to the void. We are immune to most of its effects. But we will not survive if and when the energy reaches critical mass. How? Damn it! Alright, this new ability of yours scaring the crap out of me. Still, one crisis at a time. We need to get you out of here. Ugh, come on, Rosa, move! Oof, almost moved that time. Come on, you can do this. There's no way I can reach it tied up like this. <sighs> okay. I'm mobile. Kind of.
There's no way I can reach it tied up like this. Tight. Great. All that does is scratch the lock. Aha! An old vent. <sighs> no good. pipe against this wall. There's no way I'm cutting through that. There's a key hanging on the inside. And my clothes, thank God. You mind? Right, right. You ready? Let's go. It's growing in power, we don't have much time. You okay? 30 blocks. Never ran. So fast. She's up there. She's gathering the energy within herself, trying to force her own spirit to weaken and break apart. Her spirit is strong, but her resolve is stronger. How do we stop her? I... I don't know. Nothing like this has ever happened before. Not even the universe knows what to do. Well, I guess we'll do what we always do, sweetheart. Improvise. Jesus, he's still here? Nobody can get near this building without being affected by the void energy. Nobody except us. Ow! God damn it, that hurts. I'm sorry, Michael. He's got a piece of chalk in his pocket. It looks like he used it to draw the circle. I'm not wiping it away. It's the circle of protection that Madeline created for Michael. Madeline activated it by using a part of her essence. Madeline! You! How on earth did your mind survive? Your head must be absolutely splitting. It's over, Madeline. Indeed. I have wanted it to be over for a long, long time. Look, whatever she's doing, it's happening on the other side. Maybe we should take a look?
Once upon a time, I wondered what this thing was. After so many years and so many spooks, it's hard to care anymore. Use a bit of my essence, huh? Well, here goes. Are you trying to use my own essence on me? Uh, yeah? Such an action speaks of desperation. It will not be long before you will not need to worry about such things. Are you trying to use my own essence on me? Uh, yeah? Such an action speaks of desperation. It will not be long before you will not need to worry about such things. This. Oh, how cute. This place. Well, no matter. Hey. You. You remember me. I guess I should be flattered. Open the portal. Let me through. You've got to be kidding. The energy is almost at critical mass. It is going to detonate whether I am there or not. Oh. Oh, that's all you can say. Millions of souls will be destroyed. I need to be one of them. We all need something. I thought I needed to move on, but I really want to see how this ends. It will never end. I will never end. That was the whole purpose. It was never about you. Not me, or my niece, or any of us. You see, I get it now. Why things have to be the way they are. I don't like it, but I get it. What are you talking about? Shh! I'm on a smoke break. It didn't stop. No. It's not going to stop. No. This is it, isn't it? No. No, it isn't. So many dead, Joey, so many. I know. It's never enough. I know, but we do the best we can. We always have. Yes, we always have. What the? Are those... are those spooks? Yes. Everyone who is lost. Everyone who is waiting. Waiting for someone like us. No more. They don't have to wait anymore. You're saving spooks? It's what we do. But how? That vortex. It was creating a massive spiritual energy. I'm reversing it. Making it pull in spiritual energy instead of pushing it out. You can do that? I can now. You see, it's not about you or me. It's about everyone. Go on, Joey. Go on? It's time. Move on. You can do it now. Whatever stopped you from moving on before, I'm stronger. It's not working. What? I said it's not working working it won't let me go try it now i'm sorry sweetheart but but i'm still stuck not even the power of the universe inside your head can help me move on it's gone i'm sorry joey forget it so you think everyone down there is back to normal yes everyone will wake up they won't even know they were asleep. It will be like it never happened. Yeah, we should get out of here. So, how many spooks did you manage to save, anyway? All of them. All of them? 
Yes. So, um, are we talking all the spooks here in the city, or...? No. All ghosts. Everywhere. Except for me. Except for you. That's... I know. Look, don't sweat it. I mean, people are still gonna die, right? There'll be more ghosts? Eventually. Right, so when that happens, it'll be business as usual. I guess. But in the meantime, we're free. Free? Yeah. How about a movie or something? God, I haven't seen a movie in forever. You and me both. Think of all the things we can do now. Maybe I'll sleep in. Or maybe a vacation? Yeah, somewhere sunny. Huh? I'm sorry, Joey. I thought you'd be gone. I really hoped you'd be gone. I didn't want you to see this. Red? It hurts, Joey. It's everything. It's pouring into my head. It's not a metaphor and it's not stopping. I can't hold it. You gotta try. No. It's like trying to swallow the ocean. Sooner or later you're going to drown. No, not after what you just did. Not after everything we've done. You can't just... What? Die? I don't think... I have a choice. No. This isn't fair. This isn't right. You just saved the whole damn city. You saved me. I knew the cost. I paid it. It was worth it, wasn't it? Sure. Of course it was. I... I see them. My parents, Joey. I see them. No, stay away from them. It's not time yet. Joey, please. Okay, but before you go, I'll make you one promise. No matter how long I'm around, no matter how many hosts I see die, I'm not going to turn into Madeline. Ever. Not if I'm a spook for a million years. I'll be a good spirit guide. Do what needs to be done. Forever if need be. No, Joey. You won't. Ugh. What the... What did you... How? Red? Sweetheart? Rosa? Why the hell did you do this? Here. Go on, take it. Take it! Just... I don't see him anymore. I've tried, you know. I've looked. There was this pile up on the West Side Highway last week, and now people say they hear crying. So I went over there. I didn't hear or see anything. I'm normal. Listen to me, talking to myself on the street. I call myself normal. Yeah, I know. Ironic, huh? Or at least I think that's irony. You could tell me if you were here. I'm forgetting things. About being, you know, I can't even say it. It's almost as if, now that I'm alive, I can't think about being dead. I guess that's hardwired into everybody. Turns out I'm just like everyone else in the end. But I get it now. I like being alive. Is that so wrong? Is that what I'm supposed to get from all this? That life is worth living? I guess I gotta get out there and find out for myself. Goodbye, Rosa Blackwell. I don't know how long I've got, but I know I'll see you again. Someday. But until then, I'll try to make this count. Okay? Okay.
Every voice.